Hello guys! Today I have prepared a video for you based on an Instagram poll I did a few weeks ago. Some of you were interested in me making a review about the Graphic Artist Guild book. I have the 16 edition that I recently bought. For those of you who don't know me, I am Chelsea Scalona. I am a digital illustrator living in Berlin and sharing my art journey here on YouTube with you guys. So make sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you think this content is interesting and you want to see more. And let's go! First off, as you can see, this baby is humongous. It is an ocean of information for any artist-related person that works in this field. Uh, 481 pages of information, legal, advices, pricing, you name it, it's in here. Also, the 16th edition is the latest the Graphic Artists Guild have released. It contains information from 2019 and 2020 surveys that they conduct in order to bring to you the most up-to-date information for the book. So, who am I and why am I talking about this? I have been a freelancer since I graduated back in the day from college, though I have learned a lot in this time. There were many things I didn't know how they work or how to handle some situations since they are done differently in my own country. So I have watched many artists talking about this book in the past and I have taken some reference from those videos when a client approaches to me to get a commission or to work on a project. Although I have developed some base grounds on how to work with clients, I still need to learn so much, especially since the last year I have been living here in Europe and things work differently here regarding to laws and way to handle contracts and that's where this baby comes in. So I bought this book to see if it had some information that can help me to be better prepared for my future business and future client projects. I thought that it might be interesting to you if I share my opinion about it and if it actually has helped me. I believe we artists need to be more open about these kind of things like where to find resources, information, how could you or should be pricing your work in order to all of us thrive and get fair income from our art. So transparency is very important these days in order to protect our rights and our work. So now I'm gonna make a quick sum up of what topics that does the book uh, covers overall. There are six chapters. You're going to, excuse me, I'm going to look at my notes because I want to be most accurate as possible. So the first one will be graphic art businesses. The second one, salaries, pricing, guidelines, and trades practices. The third, how to protect your business and intellectual property, very important. The fourth, success cases. The fifth, resources and references. And the six appendix for contracts and forms. This last one is the one that I found one of the most useful from the book. I will let you know why. When it comes to pricing our work, especially if you are a beginner, um, you will always find yourself not knowing what to charge. And this is something that has not been as much publicly talked about in the past. So this is changing now, luckily for us, because we can now um, find information from more established artists that already have passed through that situation and are, and are sharing their knowledge about it. So I wanted to like make a few examples from my own experience when coming to pricing book illustrations. In 2017, I took my portfolio and went to a state's published back in my country these are the institutions that handles the book publishing and hiring of artists and designers, photographers, etc. This was me freshly um, diving into this world. I did end up getting a meeting with one of the editorial heads of one of many of them and got selected to actually illustrate a children's short story that it was going to be placed on a ebook and launched on the book fair 
the next year. The deadline was actually pretty tight. I have to create seven illustrations and I was getting paid $375, which at the time, and with only two years as graduated and taking into consideration my context, I thought it was more than fair. I have never seen that amount of money in my life, so yeah. You know, I believe it was a fair payment at that time. I didn't know that due to the complexity of the illustrations I was creating and the short, short, short timeline I was having, it could have been better, honestly. I forgot to mention that I was also designing the cover for the ebook. So it was not just the interior illustrations of the book. So there were actually eight illustrations. So according to the book, um, it should have been for original work and given the complexity of the art between $600 and $1,000. Only for the cover. It was not possible maybe back then, I don't know now. I think now it might be more possible in my country, in Cuba. And if I would have taken into account the rush time fees, I should be added between 10% to 100% of the fee. So depending how much time I had to work on the project, since it was very close to the books fair. As you can see, I ended up charging half of the minimum fee. So you can make the math on how much I was off in that project. Still feeling good with my payment though. While it was a very nice project and a very nice client, there were a few things that I did not take into consideration at that time and that were very important. First, how much time I had to make all the work. Second, how much time it took me to create every piece of artwork. I was working traditionally, traditionally at that time so I had to make the minimum mistakes as possible because every mistake would, mean, would have been starting over each illustration, which I didn't have the time for. Third, revisions. So important. This is not your time. This is other people's time. And you depend on how long it will take them to give you feedback and how much feedback they will give you. Also very important. The communication channels at that time, they were not as good as they are now. We didn't have full internet like available for everyone in the country. So I depend on phone communication and work email. When I was going to my office, then I will maybe change work and personal visits. Like I had to go to the place, show the stuff and you know, you get it. It was hard and it also, took a toll on the time I had to do my work. At the end of the project, I was like half pleased with how it all turned out, but I definitely learned a lot. Timing, I cannot emphasize this enough, is super important, guys. It should be paid accordingly if you have to rush your timings for a client. Take that into consideration next time. So for my second example, I had in 2021 was reached by an independent contractor back in my country to create the full art for a picture book and any needed background for a short film that was also part of the client's project. I was getting paid a thousand dollars which given my context and the circumstances I thought it was fine. The thing guys is that with this project I didn't ask the right questions at the right time. I ended up doing 40 something illustrations, full illustrations I might add. Storyboard for the short film, filming assistants, illustrating the cover and designing the book, and the book's games. The entire project took me about three months to create. This is including, of course, client feedbacks and preparing for printing and delivered, delivering of the assets for animation. I must admit, it was a nightmare. I ended up burnt out. And feeling really bad about myself and the project being underpaid because there were things that were not agreed at first and they were demanded from me in the during the time that the project lasted and they should have. 
So again, looking at my notes here, I should have charged between $3,500 to $25,000 only for illustrating the entire book. Cover is included there, plus 30 to 40 year illustration, which is sort of the standard for picture books that usually have that amount of images that you have to work on. It's like it could go from that range. And also I should have charged an extra of 600 to 5,000 for designing the cover and the interior of the book. Of course, this all depends on the complexity of the book. I would say that it was like in the middle of this range. So yeah, I was like, I was undercharging a lot. Again, all this was way out of the mark. I do want to make a disclaimer that in my country, in Cuba, these prices would probably be never like really meet. Like you will never be charging that amount of money for this kind of purchase. But if you know what you could be charging and of course making that compar comparison to your context, then you will have an idea of what will actually be a fair payment for your work and your effort and your time and experience and equipment. You must include so many things into that equation to not end up feeling just bad and really, really underpaid. Last but not least, I have an example from a project that was actually with a client outside of my country. Pretty much at the same time I was working in the previous project that I just told you about, I was reached by a major publisher in the US. I'm not going to disclaim their name because I can't. But they want me to create a wraparound cover plus six spot liner illustrations. These are like smaller illustrations, sometimes uh, in a more simpler kind of way and liner so no black and white or no color so therefore they are like priced a little bit lower this was the entire thing that I will have to do for the book and they were offering five thousand dollars for all it was a middle grade novel so I guess we just can go like into the children's category of the book because I was reading and couldn't find like a separate fee pricing for that material, so you will go there. According to the book, the pricing that they were offering to me, it was quite on spot. That's what I should be uh, paid for, for that amount of work. And I also had three months to create all of that work, like the full cover and the six spots illustration. This, of course, is including client feedbacks and fixing times and delivering of the ready for print illustrations. The only thing that I would have complained about this project it was that I was not entitled to any kind of royalties or copyright payments. So I was giving away all my copyright uh, right, rights. <laughs> my copyright rights. So as you can see I had to learn and learn about pricing and my own worth and how to handle the timings, especially for feedbacks and so with uh, any project that I was tackling on. So back to the book. In previous editions they have included the pricing charts for black and white interior illustrations but in this edition they, have see, they seem to have merged these charts pricing. They just um, stated if it is full page, half page, quarter or spot. So based on that and the complexity of the work, what type of client you're working on what is going to be the use of the work that you're creating, where is going to be used, how long is going to be used, then you should be pricing, like taking those prices as a reference, again, it's always as a reference, and then price accordingly to your work and your worth. So the book talks about the importance of the revisions of contracts, which is another part that I find very, very, very interesting especially because I could have made a lot of use of this section of the book back in the day. Contracts, guys, are not a fixed thing. Like when a client comes to you with a pre-made contract, you are entitled to make revisions to the contract, to 
raise your concerns or ask for additions of things that you might think you need to include in the contract and that are missing. Maybe strike out some others, make clarifications if any part of the contract is just like not clear or can give uh, can open the door for future confusions when it comes to handling the work, the project in general. So yeah, this is one of us that the book uh, have very truly in my opinion, even including meetings with clients and how to behave, what questions you should be asking, what are the red flags that you should be noticing when dealing with, uh, with a new project and a new client. And yeah. This all will have probably helped me to create a more beneficial work arrangement for me and to give a client exactly what they needed. The book also talks about the term work for hire. I don't know if you are familiar with this, but this is very common when dealing with a US client, especially because it's a US law. And it is very important to have very clear the meaning of the work for hire contract term because it does not apply to every project. It actually have a nine categories list that your project need to, needs to be in one of those categories in order to be actually recognized as a work for hire contract or type of project. So it is not applied to any type of project and sometimes clients, they can take advantage of you don't know what, what is this term meanings and what is the actual legal frame for it to be legally accepted. Sometimes they don't exactly understand either. They're like, well, this is what it usually is done. It's work for hire and now it's not. Like, it doesn't always have to be that way. Again, contracts are not a chain that you set up. These are flexible paperwork that needs to work in favor of both parties. And you are the only one who's going to take care of your side of that. You know, you need to protect yourself and be very, very clear and very well informed before signing anything that says work for hire. It's not really recommended to accept a project where there is no room for negotiation in the agreement. So it's up to you to make the use of your right to protect your work and to make a fair agreement for the project and having things written down, it also helps to keep accountable both parts. So this can be applied whether it is a small commission, whether it is a medium-sized client project or big client projects. Like, it works for any of those situations and it will always help you and protect you as an artist and to give proper value to your work and your time. The last chapter is the other part that I find the most useful from the entire book besides the pricing charts and the contracts appendix. It is the contracts and forms appendix. So if you are ever required to send an invoice and you don't know what is that, of course you can google it on internet but there will be many generic invoices. You can go where it is a more complicated project or a more simple commission, you can totally decide which one you want to use. But the book does have some guidelines very, very truly thought to protect you and your work and your rights as an artist and a creator. So this can be sending an invoice, making your own custom contract for whether it's a personal contract that you will always send to your clients or custom contracts depending on which client uh, and project you are working with. So this part of the book will definitely definitely be very good for you, very useful and informative. Having all these things clear, they will help you, especially if you are a beginner because they will show to your client that they are dealing with a professional and it will also help to protect you and your rights as a creative. So I'm gonna leave it here. I don't wanna make this video like too long because this book has so many amazingly explained content, you guys, that I can only recommend for you to buy it. Whether you are a beginner, uh, intermediate, or a more established artist, um, or working on the art side of business, it could be also a photographer, a graphic designer, a pattern designer. It has content for all of us. And it's really 
really well explained and yeah, 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 I can only recommend it. What am I going to tell you? <laughs> also remember that the book is meant to use, meant to be used as a guideline, not a set of rules that cannot be changed. I mean, like they updated it every now and then with the most up-to-date uh, information that they can gather. So you need to take into consideration when accepting a project or starting to work with, with new clients, what are their needs, what kind of project it is, what is your context, and basing on that, then make a decision whether you are accepting or not the project and how to price it. For me personally, I like to think that all of those previous experiences have led me to be a more prepared for professional and also more inquisitive when it comes to asking the, the right questions and with dealing with contracts and new clients. Also to value my work better and learning to say no when there is a project or a client that is simply not beneficial for me. And this book is only taking me further in that step of being a successful artist and get fair payment for my work and experience. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and find it most helpful and interesting. Remember to give like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. I have so many things coming up in the next months for you guys if you want to see more of my work you can also check my instagram or my website or my patreon because i have a patreon now more of that in the future by the way so goodbye see you in the next video bye bye